Hey everybody, me and Buster want to say welcome to Little Cahaba Junkin, where we share a whole lot of junkin and even more Jesus. Enjoy our video. It's me, Kayla Friday, and welcome back to our channel here at Little Cahaba Junkin. Um, today, we are going to be sharing our kind of off-season home tour. Um, I always get a lot of questions from people asking, how do you decorate when it's not seasonal? So, not Christmas or fall with all the pumpkins or um, summer. I'm very patriotic. I love the Americana. Um, and with all the Christmas greens and reds, I wanted to just kind of give our home a deep clean. Well, not a too deep clean, because y'all know I'm a buzzard. <laughs> but y'all know what I mean. Just clean it up, make it neutral, and just something that's really good to transition from the rest of winter into spring. And here in Alabama, the weather is so unpredictable. It's still cold a lot of days and so rainy and dreary. So I wasn't quite feeling all the tulips and the fresh florals yet. So I wanted just something more neutral and cozy because that is just something I really enjoy. Buster, please stop licking <laughs> the video. If you hear Buster, he's licking his paws. <laughs> but anyway, here comes Buster. And y'all will see him in the video. He is our five-year-old pit bull, and he is our baby. I am his mother. I don't care. You know, I don't have his birth certificate, but he is my baby. But um, we have lots of new friends here on the channel. Our little channel is over, just about to be over two years old, and we've really grown, and I'm so thankful for that. So, um, if you're new here, like I said, my name is Kayla Friday. I'm 32, um, and me and my husband, we've been together for almost 13 years, married for six, and we live in central Alabama in Chilton County. We live in a little garden home in a subdivision, and I love vintage decorating, and I love to go junkin' and thriftin', and it's just my passion. So I love to just express myself in our home and just bring all the vintage feels. I don't really know what my decor taste is. It's definitely not like your traditional farmhouse, which is, you know, totally fine. Um, it's not elegant. It's not really rustic. It's just kind of eclectic like me. I like a little bit of everything, but it's definitely filled with vintage goodness. Um, also, I am a nurse. I've been a nurse for almost 10 years. I went to school at UAB here in Alabama and graduated there with my bachelor's in nursing. And I work full time. So this is, YouTube is not my full time job. It's more of my hobby, but I love to share our home with y'all and share our adventures with y'all. But um, you won't see me posting as many videos as other channels because I do work quite a lot <laughs> um, in my other job. But I really enjoy just this little break. And also, this channel is very faith-based. We love Jesus. We love to talk about Him. God is good all the time. And if you don't like that, then you probably won't like our channel, but please stay because I promise I'm going to talk about Jesus so much that eventually you're just going to love it too. <laughs> so um, anyway, without further ado, we'll get to our home tour and I hope you enjoy it and I hope you get some inspiration. So as always, we will start here in our living area. Um, I know a lot of homes have like a traditional seating living area and a den but we just have all in one <laughs> but our actual i would call it our den um is my husband's man cave so we converted one of the bedrooms into his little man cave and that's usually where we watch tv 
Um, but this is our living room and we'll start here. So starting over here in this corner, I have this really pretty wooden piece that I purchased from our good friend, Angie Barnett. I do want a taller piece with a more vintage feel. I mean, this one's obviously vintage. That's not really the right word, but a more chippy feel. I love the natural wood, but I want a taller, more substantial piece. And I actually purchased one from Facebook Marketplace, but it is way too big for this corner. So that will eventually go in our master bedroom that I will be redoing at some point in the future when I get a little free time. But styled on top of here, I have this old Tobacco Corporation leather bag and a violin case. And then hanging on the front, just to kind of break up the brown, I have this adorable vintage baby gown. It had some holes and my precious mama came over and sewed her up for me. And I think she's the sweetest thing ever. And all around our TV here, we have our really pretty plantation shutters. And I just kept it very simple underneath the TV this time. I wanted to really display um, all of my vintage book collection. I love them so much. And I just thought they looked really pretty under here. And I do want to share a couple of my favorites. Most are vintage Bibles, which y'all know means so much to me. But a precious, a precious subscriber sent this to me a couple of years ago. It is a Buster Brown book, and it was gifted to the Robison Brothers by Mrs. Shoud in 1930. So I absolutely love that one, obviously, because y'all know Buster Brown is our baby. And believe it or not, he was not actually named after the vintage Buster Brown shoe. My husband just called him Buster, and he had the brown spot, so we started calling him Buster Brown. And then we found out that there was an actual Buster Brown. And my most recent junk and find is this beautiful Buster Brown Abroad. And it says, to Ward from Grandma, Easter 1905. And the copyright on this book is 1904. So very very old book i found it for 30 dollars, and i was like i really don't want to spend that much on a book but online they are about 200 dollars. so i was so happy to grab that for that price and you'll also see our Roomba pamela <laughs> that is her little home over here we have this old chair that i thrifted and it was a blue velvet, so I just used some chalk paint. Um, I used the one from Walmart. Um, it didn't do as well, so then I ordered the Annie Sloan in the antique white and just painted over it and stripped the wood. And I've got a Bible open in there. And the little stool is actually my husband's from his grandmother's when he was a child. He used to sit on it and watch cartoons so that's extra special. So over here on this wall, I have a landscape that I purchased from Market Days at Birmingham. I've used it for several years and I just really love it and love all the detail in it. I think it's a really good piece for every season. The gold feels really warm for like fall and winter, but the scene has enough green in it where it's also appropriate for spring and summer. If y'all follow me over on Instagram and on Facebook, you'll know that I recently ordered some slip covers for our couch, but with it still being winter, I wanted the more masculine feel, um, the more cozy feel, so I left the leather. And hopefully in the spring, we'll pull those out to just kind of give a pop of freshness. This old piece was a gift from my friend, Miss Elizabeth Botchen. Her home tour from last year during the fall, or actually I think it was the year before last, is up on the channel and she has beautiful taste. She was an antiques and vintage dealer for years and I love getting her pieces because she has excellent taste. 
And for our gallery wall this time, I just kept it very neutral. I wanted something that I could kind of stick with for a few months. I always get questions about the books. So for the books, I actually just secure them with a screw to the frame. And then I just hang the frame onto a nail or a push pin or whatever you want to use. And a lot of people have asked me why I don't use command strips. Um, I've actually tried to use command strips many times on our walls. And <laughs> I know that homes are not built like they used to be. The paint on our wall is extremely thin. It was a cheap paint. And the few times I've tried to use command strips, it actually pulls the paint and part of the sheetrock off the wall. And yes, I'm doing it correctly. But my favorite find of late is this beautiful church attendance board. My mother, I found it and I told my mother I wanted it for Christmas. So she bought it for me and I am so, so thankful to have it. I've been looking for one for about two years and I finally found one. And Miss Lisa from our church actually gave me some of our old numbers. We still use our attendance board every Sunday at church. So I'm so grateful to have that. And then the couple is actually my great grandparents. So I'm really, really thankful to have that as well. And then I've just got lots of throws and bright pillows to kind of freshen up the brown. Like I said, I still wanted that more masculine feel, but I also like a touch of coziness and a little bit of brightness. So our coffee table, <laughs> we used to have one um, from Rooms to Go and Sweet Buster, when he was a baby, we had went shopping for Christmas and we came back and he had turned it into a chew toy. That's really the only thing he's ever chewed up. But secretly, I was kind of happy because I knew I wanted a wicker trunk as a coffee table. So this one's from Amazon. I've had it for several years, but I'm sure you can still find something very similar. And to just kind of change it up, this is actually a vintage chicken feeder. And a lot of people use them to hold plates. I've done that as well. But I thought, hey, it'd be really cool to display some more of my books. So that's what I did. Lots of religious books, Bibles, hymnals, and this sweet swan, goose, whatever he is, <laughs> is a purchase from the Rusty Pearl. I know y'all heard me and Aunt Penny talk about her so much. Ashley has the best deals, and I won this in a bid last week. And to just kind of keep up with the winter, more neutral vibe, I put just some pine cones that I got out at my mom and dad's house. And y'all know I love a candle. Just another pillow. And over here, I have not really found a side table that I loved, which is okay because I kind of like this look. So I just have an old wicker basket that I also found the same day I found the Buster Brown pick or Buster Brown book, and I have it just sitting on top of an old suitcase. One of my favorite areas to decorate is definitely our little mantle over here. I always wanted a fireplace, but obviously our home who <laughs> is not built with one. So I found this old mantle over in Fife, Alabama at a little vintage store, and I don't think it's there anymore, but I found it for $100, and I was so sad because at Vintage Pickin' there were two that I really wanted, and they were already sold, but this one was waiting for me after we left for a much better price, and I love it. It's perfect for every season, and I just really love the backdrop it gives. In this piece, no, I still do not have hardware for it. I purchased two beautiful pools um, that I found on Etsy that have quail and they're gorgeous, but I have to find some more pools that I really like. So until then, I'm just keeping it plain. One thing to always remember is your home does not have to be complete all the time. Your home is always a work in progress. We don't have an unlimited budget to just be spending frivolously. So make sure what you get is what you love. But this is another piece from Miss Elizabeth. It was a gray color. I just stripped it down and left some of the paint 
and I thought it would look really cute propped in front of our fireplace. So that's been there for a couple of months. And over here we have the book of Esther. I love, love the story of Esther and my mother's mother's name was Esther and that is my middle name. I'm named after her. So I always love opening it to the book of Esther. This piece was a find from, I believe, Rustic Warehouse 72, and I just think it is so pretty. And I kept it super simple and just put some pillar candles in there. And I also found this, um, I didn't have really any appropriate floral stems, so I just went out in the yard at my mother's house and in our yard and collected things. And I actually took these branches off of a tree in my mother's yard, and I think they turned out super cute. So three o'clock <laughs> is my favorite time of day. You can, can you not at least wait till the home tour is over? Say no. He, he knows that this is his couch. He just lets me put pretty things on it every now and again. But this is his home. In our home, Buster sleeps on our bed. He gets on our furniture. He's our baby. He's the love of our life, so whatever he wants to do. <laughs> I also have to share this sign. I always share it. And even though it's not vintage, it's not really my style that I've kind of adapted to, I can't get rid of this sign because I love it and it's just something that I try to live by. It says, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, nor height nor depth, anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ our Lord. And y'all, that is so true. Nothing is ever so bad. We are never so far gone or so down that the hand of God can't reach us. And for that, I'm so thankful. Buster, are you going to come in here and show them the kitchen? Okay, I'll do it myself. <laughs> So next, we will kind of tour the kitchen and I'll show you guys what we did in here. Starting over here, a while back, um, I really just kind of wanted to break up the black of the cabinet and add some color and texture. So a really easy and inexpensive way to do that is adding an accordion rack. So I have several of these throughout our home. In this one, I just try to add some cool vintage kitchen pieces, the strainer or the colander, the brass pieces there, the old basket, and the room were all thrifted. And then the sweet apron actually came from Walmart. And beneath this, I have my step ladder because I'm short, I'm five foot tall, and I have trouble reaching the top shelf sometimes, especially if something's in the back. But I also converted this old potato bin to Buster's food container. So it says Buster Vittle. So in the South, food is Vittles. So that's where his food stays. So over here, we have our dining table. I would love to find, um, so when we first bought this house, I was very farmhouse style, and we've been here almost six years, but I was very farmhouse, very Hobby Lobby. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that, 
but my taste and my love for vintage has really changed and grown. So I would love a more vintage chandelier to hang here just to kind of bring a more vintage feel to the space. Um, so our home is a newer home. It doesn't, I mean, I love our home. I'm so thankful for it, but it doesn't have a ton of character that I love like the old homes. So I really want to bring in some older pieces to kind of bring that character in. But for now, we have this chandelier. It was actually from Lowe's. And our table here is from World Market. I love the table, it's really cute. I will say that as my husband and I have got, you know, gained the weight from being happily married and just not really caring, you know, we get real comfortable. Um, if you are more big bodied like me, this is not a very practical option. It's not very comfortable, but, um, so maybe, you know, I'm, we love this table, but I do really one day want to get a more functional table, a wooden table with four chairs to go here. But for now, we love it. And sweet Buster, he is enjoying our new rug. This came from Walmart for $75. I have never had a rug under the kitchen table, but I really think it just kind of brings the space together. Over here, um, again, if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, I had a beautiful angel hair fern, or excuse me, maiden hair fern in here. I don't know what happened. I usually have really good luck with house plants. It bit the dust within like two weeks of having it. So I just added some more of my um, harvested <laughs> limbs from the yard and I really think these are super cute because they have the acorns attached to them and I just kind of created a little vignette here on this old lap desk the lap desk came from vintage picking and then I've got some more candles and I've had this here for the last couple of home tours but I just really like it and why change it if I love it? But it says what to serve on a Friday. And I love that because that's our last name, obviously. So over here on our hutch, I just kept things very simple. I used to collect Ray Dunn. I still like Ray Dunn, but it just did not fit my style anymore. It just did not go. It clashed with my vintage, in my opinion. That's just my opinion. I still love Ray Dunn and I think it looks adorable in people's homes. But I knew I really wanted to display lots of my ironstone and stoneware. So that's what we did. This beautiful transfer wear, transfer wear piece I recently thrifted for $6. And I love my bowls. I got them both for a really good deal. Um, that one, I believe, was 20 bucks, but y'all are going to die. I thrifted this bowl for $6.99. This bowl right here at Vintage Pickin' would be at least $50, $60. And I just have it filled with old kitchen utensils. Buster's moved my <laughs> stool. And that stool is also a thrifted find. But guys, I know we don't have an unlimited budget. Most of you don't either. So expressing yourself and decorating your home does not have to be expensive. This is a new mirror. I love it. I purchased it from Taylor Morgan Vintage down at Prattville Pickers. I've had my eye on this mirror for a while and I finally decided to purchase it with some birthday money. And then over here we have Esther Ruth, who is my wire dress form. And the little um, apron that she is wearing actually was thrifted as well. More ironstone. And then I have this little high chair. That's for when Buster eats his meals. <laughs> you think you could fit in there, huh? And then over here, I always get questions about this beautiful corner piece. This was actually made by my brother who is a carpenter and he made it for me out of an old door. He just cut it in half and then he made some shelves that matched very well. 
and we kind of distressed the shelves to match the door, but I love this. I think it turned out so good. And that old muffin tin back there was actually my mama Esther's. My Aunt Kim gave me that and I'm so grateful to have it. So it's always on display. So now we will take a look at this side of the kitchen. Over here, I have just the top of an old chicken feeder with some of my ironstone displayed. And I love houseplants. Like I said, I have pretty good luck with houseplants, but that maiden hair fern just did not, it did not want to be here. Um, over here, I took the actual holder or the metal piece off of the scales and put another piece of ironstone. And in here, I just have my collection of butter pats displayed. I actually found these big stamped pieces on the longest yard sale for $2 a piece. And if y'all go to Etsy and search for ironstone butter pats, they are usually anywhere from $12 to $25. And I ain't paying that. <laughs> um, and another little tip, so this is not actually a butter pat. This is part of a child's tea set but it has the same look as the butter pads. So these are much more inexpensive. So if you want a cheaper option, search for child's tea set. And then I just have this scoop I put in there. My hand soap. I also want to do a window treatment over here. I do not have curtains in our home. Um, I just didn't think we needed them with our blinds that we have but to kind of add a little something over here i do want to get a window treatment so we'll be looking for something to put there and over here i just have some more stuff i just have stuff everywhere <laughs> this is not actually a recipe box um, i think it was for phone numbers or something but i thought it was super cute and kind of looked like a recipe box Then over here on our stove, I always struggle with keeping my stove clean. So to kind of disguise it, I hang the hand towels. This is just a metal um, shower curtain clip. And so I hang seasonal towels there. Just have another jute rug. I do, ooh, Buster. <laughs> Buster must have saw a squirrel. I do want to find a different rug to go here. But over here, I just have another hand towel and, of course, a candle and this really pretty copper tea kettle. I think it all tied together cute. So, a very sweet subscriber actually sent me these set of, this set of canisters because I had said I wanted them. So, I'm forever grateful for that. I love them so, so much, and I think they are perfect for every season. And over here, I just have another collection of Crocs. Um, I found this one actually out behind my husband's grandmother's house, just like laying in a pile of stuff, so I grabbed that up. And I just have all sorts of kitchen tools and a plant. And then I've had this for the last several home tours, but again, I really like it, so I'm not gonna change it right now. But um, I love using this flower frog to display some of my old um, silverware. So these are really pretty. They have a lot of pretty detail. So I kind of have it set up like a little coffee bar. And then, obviously, we cannot live without our curate. So, we will do another spin. And another thing that I'm definitely going to be looking for is something to use as a very small kitchen island. Um, so, nothing substantial, nothing with seating, obviously, because we don't have the room for it. But I do want a small kitchen island here just to kind of break up this empty space and just to make it feel more warm. And I don't know, I just want a kitchen island. So that is definitely something that I'm gonna be looking for at our upcoming shows and also 
on the longest yard sale, which we are definitely going to again. I'm so excited for that. But I also want it to be affordable and I don't want it to be too modern. So I'm just holding out till I find the perfect piece. Coming into our hallway here, I have another <laughs> accordion rack, surprise, surprise. And I really have been loving these vintage hats recently. I purchased this one from the Cotton Shed and I love her pieces, but I did pay um, <laughs> more for it than I wanted to. But then, <laughs> y'all aren't gonna believe this. So I purchased that one and then over here, I purchased this one for $6 at the thrift store. <laughs> I said, well, at least now I have to, but you know, I think they look cute together, but I'm telling y'all just go to the thrift stores and look, you gotta be patient. Some days you'll leave with nothing. Other times you will score. So my aunt Penny gave me this really cute little mesh bag and I wanted to kind of keep the pine cone thing. So I filled her up with some pine cones. Let me turn this light on. Y'all, my lights are so yellow, I apologize. But this is also from the Cotton Shed and it is a really cute old seed bag. And I just went out at my mom's and cut some magnolia stems and I stuck that in there and I think it turned out super cute. So in here, this is our little guest bathroom. I recently took down the towel rack because I hated it. <laughs> um, and I made a little collage of baskets. Um, these two, actually that one was thrifted. This one actually came from Target. I was thinking I thrifted that one, but I didn't. That came from Target. And then this was a find at a vintage market, but I thought they looked very cute. I'll wave it, y'all. And then here I have this beautiful black framed old vintage mirror from the 1920s. And I do definitely want to change out the light in here to something more vintage. I also have some wallpaper samples because I want to eventually wallpaper this entire wall behind the mirror to kind of add some coziness and a little dimension in here. So like I said, even though our home's newer, I am making it into what into my vision, I guess, <laughs> because we're going to be here for a while the way the market is right now. And I love our home. It's perfect for us. Perfect location with our mom and dad's being so close. But, you know, I just really want to make it into my own. So that's what we try to do. Buster. Um, and then this was a thrifted rug I found for $4 at our thrift store. The beautiful um, stool was actually a gift from my Aunt Penny. I love it in here and I think it just adds a little touch. And then over here, I've had this hanging up since we bought the home, but I still really like it. Um, it's just an old window frame and Penny and I attach these hooks and I hang seasonal towels here and I usually have a wreath up as well. So, we want a kitchen island and we want new lights in the kitchen and in here and we want a wallpaper. So lots of projects, hopefully in the next couple of years. Buster, are you going to show them the guest bedroom, buddy? Y'all, this thing is so rotten. <laughs> so this is our guest bedroom. I'm sorry, y'all, the glare is terrible. And I absolutely love to decorate in here. So the furniture in here, I've said this before, um, this furniture was actually mine at my mother's. It was just a very cheap bedroom suit. Um, and it was just that press board, but I painted it with chalk paint and just kind of distressed it just a bit to make it look more vintage. I would love to get a vintage headboard, um, a very tall one to kind of go up the wall and also another vintage dresser. But like I said, we don't have an unlimited budget and this is fine for now. But on top of that, I added this beautiful mirror. I found it on the longest yard sale for $20. 
And I love when a mirror has character like this, y'all. I love the flaws. And then I have a really pretty cast iron horse here. I purchased that from my good friend, Miss Susan Cornelius at one of her markets. And then we've got some horse trophies and more <laughs> forage decor. Like I said, free o'clock guys. But I think all of that turned out really cute together. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> I have another accordion rack. I just told y'all I love decorating with these. It's so easy. You don't have to put a ton of holes in your wall and you can change it out however you want. But like I said, very neutral for this time of year. So I just kept things very simple. Got a rug beater, this sweet baby dress or baby gown. I purchased this really cute basket from Down Home Chippy, and I love her. She's my one of my favorite vendors up at Vintage Pickin'. Um, she recently had a baby boy, so she's been taking a break from the markets, but I'm hoping she's going to be back soon because I absolutely love her stuff. But if not, that's totally fine. We all know family is the priority. So like I said, I love to decorate this room just because nobody ever sees it, but I just kind of like, I like to just express myself in here and just make it super cozy. We don't have a lot of guests <laughs> that spend the night, but I'm ready if they want to. I love these pillow covers. These are Turkish rug pillow covers, and I think they are just so vintage and beautiful. So I've used those all throughout our home. And this bedspread came from Walmart. Y'all, you cannot beat good old Walmart. I'm telling you. Um, I, <laughs> I'm ashamed to say. So back when we bought our home, I bought a bedspread for our king bed from Anthropology. I paid a psycho amount <laughs> for it. I would never do that now, but you know, and now I don't even like it. Like it's not even what I want and I'll never get back what I paid for it. So I always go for inexpensive options now. And what, I mean, a bed blanket is so versatile. It's so easy to change up. And they're usually around 20 to $30 for a full or queen and usually around 50 bucks for a king. And you just can't beat that. And they're so much easier to wash than the bedspreads and the duvet covers. So this beautiful hope chest was made by my grandfather, Jim. Um, my precious papa could not read or write. Um, he had a very hard life growing up, but this was one of the smartest men I ever, ever met. And I respect and love him and miss him so much. He could build anything, read any type of blueprint. He was the smartest man and he didn't even know how to read or write. So education, degrees, that is not a level of success, guys. The way you treat and love people, the way you are to your family and the things you do with the gifts that God gave you, that is how you measure success. And he also made this beautiful chiffre robe. Oh, the glare is so bad, guys. Let me try to fix that. Okay. So over here, I also have Corey's grandmother Singer sewing machine. I absolutely love it. And for a long time, I didn't put anything on top of it. But I really wanted to get some vintage rosaries and display those. I love them and I found this bust. So I decided to put that on top of here to display that collection. And then I recently, a couple of months ago, found this really pretty clock. This old table is actually from a farmhouse that was over in Columbiana, Alabama. I've even thought about making this into an island but I would have to get my brother to raise it up probably just a little bit to make it look 
more islandy, I guess. So I may actually do that because I love this piece. It's beautiful. It's the perfect size that I'm looking for. So I think I'm going to talk to my brother and see about him putting some um, risers on the legs to kind of bring it up just a bit. And I think that would be perfect. But if I don't do that, I'm going to just keep looking. But just kind of kept it simple over here. I've got a vintage typewriter collection of my oil lamps. And then I have another gallery wall. Surprise, surprise. Y'all know I'm obsessed with those. And this at the top is actually Corey's granny, the one who gave me the Singer sewing machine. And she's doing so good, y'all. If you remember, about a year ago now almost, she had a stroke. And basically the doctors told us that she may not get to come home. Well, we just, we did not accept that. We just prayed and just proclaimed healing and the good Lord delivered and he healed her and she's home and she's doing so, so good. So I'm so thankful for that. And I have no idea <laughs> who that little girl is. One of my friends told me it was creepy that I had random people on my wall, but, and I guess it kind of is in a way, but I love it. <laughs> And then, of course, the Last Supper. So I'll just share with y'all our back porch. Um, it's nothing crazy, but I did kind of freshen it up out here a little bit yesterday. It has been so gross in Alabama. It's been raining for like a month straight, y'all. And you can't do anything in the yard. My flower beds look terrible. My yard looks terrible, but you can't cut the grass. Thank goodness it's been cold where the grass hasn't been growing too much because that riding lawnmower would bog down. <laughs> I'd have to go get Corey's truck to pull me out. But just kind of kept it neutral out here again. Buster always enjoys sitting on that little church pew. And I found this old typewriter from a friend. Um, and during the spring, I'm going to plant some succulents or either some ivy in the top of it there. So I'm really excited for that. Lots of work to do here in the yard. I want to completely redo that seating area up there, add more rock, get all new pillow covers and stuff and we've just got a lot of work to do. A lot of work. Well guys, that is pretty much it for our home tour today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some inspiration for your own homes. Come here, Buster. <laughs> Buster, as always, enjoyed having you, um, but I hope you have a very blessed weekend and blessed week, and I know there is so much um, unknowns, suffering, sadness, sickness in the world. Uh. <laughs> Buster's about to start preaching too. But just remember, this world is not our home. Um, we have somewhere better, somewhere perfect waiting for us. My life is not perfect. I, I deal with things all the time. I'm not saying that being a Christian means that you have a perfect life because it absolutely does not. Um, you know, I saw a video on Facebook not long ago and it was a man asking an older woman who had dementia, he said, your entire life, you have loved Jesus, you've loved God, you've been a Christian, you've done what you're supposed to do and now you're just basically rotting, you have dementia. And I, on the other hand, have it. I don't care, and I have a wonderful life. Why is that? And what she said really struck home. So she had a moment of clarity, and she said, sometimes the devil allows people to live a carefree life. That way they do not turn to Jesus. Their life and sin and everything 
that they're going through and their happiness is like a jail cell, but the door is wide open. So they have no, but they have no need to leave because it's so warm and cozy and they don't have any worry or concern until one day the door slams shut and it's too late. And I was like, you know that, that's so true. And without Jesus, I could not make it. I literally could not make it. He is my hope. He's who I turn to when life is so hard, when I need answers. And it's just without him, I wouldn't be anything. I would not be able to do anything. I would not be able to have the home I have. He's blessed us so much. He has shown up for us when we needed him financially, spiritually, in our family. And like I said, life is not perfect. It's not easy. But with Jesus, this very, very hard life is possible and tolerable to make it every day. And it just gives me something to look forward to. And so many people ask me, well, what if God's not real? What if Jesus isn't real? I said, you know, I can't tell you, I can't prove to you that he's real, except just that I know he is because I feel him all around me. And in the end, if I'm wrong, being a Christian and loving the Lord has brought me so much happiness and so much comfort that it won't matter anyway. But I know I'm not wrong. I know that Jesus is real. I know that he has a place planned for me. And I know that all of this crazy world, all this hustle and bustle and everything that I go through is not for nothing. So anyway, sorry to ramble, but y'all know I always have to ramble at the end of every video. But I love y'all so much. Just be blessed. Have a wonderful week, and I'll see you on the next video.